Welcome. Today marks National Rescue Day. So I wanted to do a quick webinar to share some tips so that you can ensure that it's successful when you bring your new rescue dog home. First off, congratulations. This is a really exciting time. You've got a new family member coming in. We're just learning about each other. They'll be learning about potentially even just the urban environment as a whole. They'll be trying to fit in with your family, getting to know everyone. It's a big, exciting time. It's exciting for you. It's exciting for your family, those around you. It's exciting for our dogs, but it can also be very stressful on them. So we're going to go through a few things to ensure that it continues to be successful. They can be a welcome and wonderful family or addition to the family and that we can ensure that we minimize stress for them. It's important that we understand things from the dog's perspective. We're bringing a new family member in, but for our dogs, they just don't understand what's happening. For some of them, depending on where they've come from, this has been a really big transition and potentially it's happened rather quickly. You know, we can have dogs that are coming from out of country even, so they've been pulled off perhaps a street dog environment. They're traveling on a plane for the first time, which is really scary. They're just brought into these homes with people, other animals that they don't know. And then they're being moved again. Some of these dogs may have been moved around quite frequently. Some of them may be coming out of the shelter environment. Perhaps they haven't really experienced life in a home. So there's lots of changes for them. All of the stuff around us, we need to remember that all of this is familiar and we understand it. For dogs, this can be like going on a whole new planet. It can be very different for them. It's a new environment, potentially new expectations. Perhaps they've never been in a home, so they don't know what that's like. Perhaps they've had negative experience in, experiences in these environments before. They don't understand maybe what a vehicle is, you know, a bicycle is. It can be very, very overwhelming. And little things that seem norm, so normal to us, like, you know, the closing of a garbage can can be very scary for a dog that maybe hasn't had a whole lot of exposure to them. We see that a lot. So many of these dogs just are under socialized in the sense that they're not familiar with the urban environment. So it's a massive transition for them. Some of them are young, so they're learning about the world in general anyway. So they just haven't had a huge exposure to the urban environment, particularly just because of their age. Other dogs, it's totally new. For some of them, you know, it may be the fourth time in a house. Perhaps they've had a challenge with bonding with their families or it's just been really traumatic because they really miss past families. We don't necessarily know all of it. It's important that we understand things from their perspective so that we can help them be more successful with this change. We can forget often how different all of this stuff is to our dogs. So the more that we can be proactive in helping them through this transition, the more successful they're likely going to be with our family. It's important that we understand signs of anxiety. This can be that your dog is coming into the home, they're struggling with the transition, and the sooner that we can recognize when they're feeling stress, the better we're going to be at helping them. So we can assess the situation, make them feel more comfortable, adjust things for them, or perhaps just understand that they're going to need more time to settle in. And that's fine. It might also identify that it's time to work with the trainer. So some of the things you want to watch for are pacing. This is really normal when they're first coming into a new environment. So if they're pacing and moving around, having a hard time settling, it's sometimes just that they need time to settle in. You know, we want to be pairing things with a positive to make sure that they're understanding these are positive situations. And it's normal maybe for them to feel a little suspicious or uncertain of these things. But the more that we pair it with positives, the less likely this is going to go on for a longer period and they can move through this anxiety faster. You may see that they're panting or drooling. You know, if they're under a lot of stress, you'll see excessive drooling. And it's, again, we make note of it. So we would just take things really nice and slow, pair it with positives, ensure that we're doing everything that we can to not overwhelm them. You may have excessive urination and defecation. I'm going to talk some more about this later, but we may see that they're seeming to do this a lot when they're first settling in. So they may be having more accidents. Perhaps they're more likely to have an accident in the house than they may have previously or in a new environment. This can just be a response to stress. So again, we make note of it, monitor it, and uh, we should see that start to settle as they settle in. 
restlessness or depression. So it may be that the dog's having a hard time to settle. Often we have dogs that can be over the top in their excitement. They have, they struggle with focus. There's lots of movement. They seem like they have a lot of energy. This is usually an indicator that they're under stress. So we want to be really nice and patient with them. The flip side is you may have a dog that's just really struggling with the transition. It could be that they were really attached to a previous family that they're no longer with. And so we may see that they're just seeming a little bit more depressed or lethargic. And again, we make note of it, monitor it. And just so that you're aware of it. So if it continues, you're either speaking with a vet or a trainer to help them through it. Vocalness as well. So you may find that, that you have a dog that's barking more, whining more, howling even, and this is fairly normal and a sign that they're maybe feeling some stress or anxiety as they're going through this. And so we want to be patient again. It should, again, be something we see decrease, um, but it's really important on how we respond to this stress as well, because if they're feeling stressed and they're getting vocal and we get frustrated or angry, you're going to see this increase and worsen. Um, you're going to be adding the stress to the dog and it's going to be more difficult to move through this and not have this be an reoccurring behavior problem. And just overall signs of stress. We have a really great webinar dog talk that goes through all of canine communication and body language. I highly recommend this. I would love to see every dog owner go through and understand canine communication because often we're missing some really important cues from our dogs that are indicators that they're maybe feeling uncomfortable. And so we want to ensure that we understand this so that we can reassess the situation and adjust it so that our dogs can feel more safe and confident. So some of the things you're looking for are just that your dog is, you know, backward motion, perhaps tails tucked. They could be having lots of energy and a real lack of focus. So you're seeing that they're kind of in that fool around or perhaps they're frozen and not moving around much. It's important that we understand these signs so that we can help them. Again, you're likely gonna see a lot of them when your dogs are first moving into your household and coming into the family. New situations is really normal. They're not really sure what's going on. You make note of it and you wanna see that you see these lessen. And then we know that our dogs are starting to feel more comfortable. And again, right away we're pairing everything with positives to ensure that we minimize the stress they're going through. Shutdown is one that we see a lot with our dogs when they're going through this transition. Um, you may see a dog that's coming out of a shelter environment, maybe going into a home. The whole situation has been really tough on them. And so we can see a dog that's kind of shut down. The reason why I wanted to bring this up is because sometimes this can be sort of a false indicator that we've got a really calm dog. And as they start to feel more comfortable and settle in, we may see their true personality and behavior start to blossom out of that. Sometimes that can be challenging. So you may have a dog that you thought was really calm and now suddenly they've got high energy, they're active, they're struggling with focus, they just need some general manners, training and obedience. Or you may have a dog that starts to show some more concerning behaviors such as reactivity or fear concerns. So when we see those, it could be that they're under stress, so they're suppressing some of that, they're just overwhelmed. As they start to feel comfortable, it comes out. This can be really discouraging, but I like giving owners a heads up on this so that when they bring that new dog home and they see it, they recognize that they've got to help them out. And it's, you know, the sooner you deal with it, the better, but also why it's so important because how we're setting up these situations for success will really indicate how much that's going to impact the dog or maybe how strong of a response we're going to see your change in behavior. So the first thing you want to do is be prepared for your dogs. It's much easier and it's going to be much less stressful on everyone. If we put some thought in, we're proactive versus reactive. We think about some things the dog's going to need when they're coming into the home. Things like their gear or accessories. So harnesses, highly recommend harnesses, something that your dog can escape out of easily. You know, you may even look at a double-ended leash that's attached to a harness and a collar, or perhaps you've got two leashes, just to make sure in the beginning that they don't slip out and they, um, cause it can be very difficult if a new dog gets away from us in the beginning. So we wanna do everything to make sure that they're safe and secure. You wanna consider bedding for them, make sure they've got a nice comfortable area that they can relax in. 
you've got food for them. Often you can speak with the rescue group that you're getting the dog from, find out what they're feeding. Often they'll supply you with some initially. And you want to make sure that you don't just switch the food on them. They're going to be under stress anyway, so it's normal to have some GI issues. But if we switch food on them suddenly, we can really attribute to that being much worse. So you want to transition the food. You can find new food for them and you start to just um, ration it out. So maybe you know, three quarters of the old food and a quarter of the new food for a few days, and then going to half and then going to three quarters of the new and a quarter of the old, and you sort of transition it to make sure that they're not experiencing any stomach upset and that it's a good choice for them. You also want to make sure you've got a variety of toys and treats, you know, nothing too exciting, getting some of those enrichment objects so that, you know, lick mats, Kongs, um, interactive puzzles, and then just some general chews and stuff and a variety of treats because you're doing such a good job at pairing everything with positives to make sure that your dog is comfortable. And then you want to set up their own space. So when you set up their own space, think about an area in the house that can be nice and quiet. You know, it's nice if your dog can be with you. You know, it's great bonding experience. So if they can be in the bedroom or close to you, you're going to find often the dogs will settle much easier versus being isolated on their own. But if you can set up a nice space, they can be in a secure spot. They've got room to move around. They've got some bedding, some things in there to make sure that they're comfortable. But also it's a nice quiet area. So if there's activity or things, your dog has a nice, quiet, secure spot that they can settle in. So when you first bring your dogs home, we want to ensure that this is nice and successful and we don't overwhelm them. So we recommend giving yourself time. You know, don't rush. You've got to pick up your dog and you have to be somewhere in an hour. Make sure you've got good time. We recommend ensuring that you've got a few days off with them to help them settle in. Make sure that you're supervising them and you're around so that they're not feeling like they've been abandoned. Take them for a nice quiet walk. This can be near your home. It can be at your home, depending on your area. Depending on the time of day, you wanna make sure that it's quiet, nothing's gonna startle them. When you're doing this too, you're really letting them sniff. So you're doing a decompression walk. Again, you've got that nice secure equipment on them. You're just letting them kind of settle in with the area. Sometimes it might be worthwhile to do this. So let's say you pick them up from a foster or a shelter environment. You go to a nice open space, just let them sniff, let them do their thing. Pair with positives. I recommend training anytime they check in with you. You're going to start that training right away and ensure that they feel comfortable with you. And you're just going to let them sniff and go nice and slow. Then you want to do this as you come to your house too. So let them explore the front yard. Let them kind of take in some sense. Don't rush them right into the home. You also... Uh, we recommend say if there's other family members or anything that introductions are done outside of the home so that the dog's not coming into the home feeling overwhelmed and suddenly a person is around. This is especially important for dogs that maybe have shown they're a little bit more shy or really social friendly dogs. Maybe this isn't as concerning, but again, I always focus and recommend that we're looking at things and being proactive versus reactive. It's much better to have a positive interaction outside and risk that an interaction inside startles them and perhaps set them off on the wrong foot with someone. You want to ensure that you're not giving them full access to the house too. So keep areas closed, let them expo um, be exposed to small areas and explore. Uh, you're staying with them, you're supervising them, you're letting them just go at their pace, but don't let them just come and go everywhere. That can be overwhelm overwhelming, very exciting. It can also, you can risk ask accidents and just not so great situations happening. And then make sure you've got a secure yard. So before you bring them home, even I would ensure that you've got uh, the gates closed properly, any gaps closed. Uh, you know, we're not sure necessarily about the dogs. Some dogs may be feeling unsure. So we even recommend having them on leash in backyard the first few times so that they can kind of explore, get comfortable with it. And you wanna be careful because some dogs can clear fences. So if they're feeling really nervous, we wanna make sure that they don't run the risk of jumping the fence on you. So you're out there with them, you're supervising them, but also letting them explore, sniff, and just take things in at their own pace. Decompression first is incredibly important. Your dogs have gone through a lot. As I mentioned, you're gonna see some transition in behaviors, they're settling in. And it's really important that we lay that foundation for them, give them time to decompress and de-stress and just have some nice quiet time and get caught up on some much needed rest. You wanna keep things quiet in the home. 
So don't have people over, make sure that everyone's settled, ensure that the whole family understands this and that we're keeping things calm for the dogs to start. We want to separate pets too. So if you've got other pets in the household, I'd even go so far as recommending that you don't do introductions for the first 24 hours. This can be tough. So make sure that all the dogs are getting exercise, they're getting their decompression, you've got enrichment toys, they've got things to do. But this can allow the dog just that really much needed downtime first to just sort of settle in, get used to things, recognize that they're safe and you're more likely going to have success between the pets at that point as well. So wait on those intros with family members too. I'm not talking about people within the household. We're very excited when we get a new dog, but we recommend waiting to have people over, introducing to other family or friends, dogs or other pets. Give them a good, you know, I would even say 72 hours up to a week, depending on the dog, where they just have some time to get to know you, feel safe and comfortable, and just let things settle a bit and really experience the benefits of that decompression. Again, ensure they've got limited access to the house so that they're not having all these areas to explore. They're just staying in nice, calm areas. Um, this is beneficial on many sides, so it prevents destruction, them getting into things, uh, accidents in the house. There's so many reasons to really limit that access to start. And then again, that they're always supervised. So don't leave them home alone and out and trust that everything is going to be okay. You're going to build that up slowly. Uh, you want to prevent accidents and stuff from happening as well. So you're keeping them supervised to ensure they're not getting into any trouble. It's really important with the training. You want to start training right away with your dog. So, but I wouldn't say go right to teaching them all these skills and working through stuff and working their brain too much. Cause again, we want them on that nice decompression side. But the one thing I always recommend is rewarding that good behavior right away. So I mentioned rewarding them when they check in with you, when you're out on walks, I'd be ex experimenting, seeing what treats they like. And I would reward all behavior. I want to see more of. There's a few reasons why this is really important. A, you're laying out those expectations for them. So you're going to minimize stress because right away they're like, I do this, good things happen. I'm going to do it more. You're preventing them from making the wrong choice. They may still make the wrong choice, of course, but you're minimizing that. You're really showing them what you want them to do instead. They greet people with all four paws on the ground. Reward it. They check in with you. Reward it. They go to the bathroom outside. Reward it. They go past another dog or person. They don't bark. Reward it. You're thinking about all the things things you want them to do. Don't just assume that that's behavior they're always going to show. Like I said, they may be a little shut down. So we can be really proactive in rewarding what we want to see more of. If they approach you, reward it. You know, if they're calm when another animal is around, all these things are going to reward. You're laying that solid foundation. What it does in turn is it really starts to strengthen the relationship between you and your dog. So you're enhancing that relationship. You're really building that trust between you. It also really helps build confidence in them. So they're understanding that their behavior makes good things happen and you'll really help them feel safe sooner. This is one of the most important things to do. You should have treats on you all the time, reward jars around the house. I wouldn't free feed them necessarily unless they're not really eating, of course, but I'd be working on just using that food and teaching them what's expected of them. It's powerful, powerful stuff that's going to lay a really solid foundation and set both of you up for much more success and minimize frustration. And house training is an important part of this as well. So we don't really know the history, things are changing. We talked about how this can be a sign of stress. And so with any new dog coming into the house, it's like house training 101. So we're supervising them, we're not giving them free access, we're confining them when we can't supervise them, we're making sure that they view that confined space as something positive for them as well. So we're doing alone training with that, we're rewarding them when they go to the bathroom outside, we're aware of schedules, we're Letting them out right after they drink water or they have a good play or they eat a meal. So you're going right to the basics, laying that foundation, even for a dog that has had previous found, found or previous work with house training and understands that, just reinforces that, minimizes accidents in the house 
And this is a tough one for a lot of people. And then if you have a dog that hasn't really been inside, you're really doing house training 101 and just setting that expectation up right away. So I would do this with any dog coming in regardless. If you have, if you have male dogs that have shown a tendency to mark, get those belly bands too. So start right away so you're not having accidents in the house. Um, it really minimizes some frustration and stress for everyone. And I would start on this as soon as you get them. If you're out on that walk before you bring them into the house and they're going to the bathroom, re reward them for it. You're setting that foundation up. Good things happen when they potty outside. And finally, it's just really important that you're patient. We have to understand everything our dogs are, have gone through. They're learning. They don't know what's expected of them. So they're coming in. It's all new to them. We've got to be very patient and understand that and help them be successful. You know, disobedience. So if you see a dog that's maybe being over the top excited, they're mouthy, they're having accidents, they're being destructive, they're not really listening. All of these things that we can deem as a dog being stubborn, disobedient, dominant, all these really inappropriate and false labels. I want you instead to think about the dog as they're going through this, that they're struggling. It's a sign that they don't know what's expected of them. They're under stress. It's really then our responsibility to show them what to do, ensure that we set things up for success, we're being nice and patient and empathetic with all the change they've gone through and we're helping them. So we're taking the time to really be with them, show them what's expected and help them feel safe and confident in our home. I want you to have a long standing, lovely relationship with your new dogs, your rescue dogs. I want you to be able to take them with you day to day, do anything with them. So it's starting out with this, a success right at the beginning and laying that solid foundation, being proactive with them versus reactive is going to allow you to do that. If you have questions at any time, you can email us at training at dogmatraining.com. Thank you.